page 124, O Sole Mio. Now, I'm doing a lot of these Alfred books, and they a lot of them have the same pieces in them. I know I've done this once or twice before. Uh, I don't remember what I said about it because all my videos are unscripted. I just say what I think at the time I'm saying it, and that's whatever it is, that's what comes out. It's a spontaneous thing. Uh, I feel teaching, for the most part, is a lot more interesting when it's spontaneous. So, if you're really getting the full effect, you would probably need to go watch the other videos on the same piece. Because I might leave stuff out here, or I might include stuff here that I left out in the other videos. I don't know. Oops, I don't bother with it. But I am going to tell you what I think of, the, of what's going on here. This piece is in F major. So all the B's are going to be B flats automatically. I'm going to start out with the right hand. Right at the beginning on these chords, I'm playing with a metronome, so I'm going to double the value of each note. So I'm going to hold each chord down for two counts. So it's going to go one, two, one, two, one, two, and then we keep going. If I were not playing with a metronome, I would feel how long I want to hold them down. And I might not hold them all down the same length. That's okay. The melody is the top note of the right hand. Try and bring that out. That's what we want to hear. The other notes are just harmony. They just so bring out the top note. We want to hear the top note, and that makes it a little more difficult or challenging for you because it's more difficult to play one note louder than the other when you're playing them at the same time in the same hand. Play the melody by itself if you need to hear it. Okay. This whole piece pretty much is like that. There's a few times where you're only playing one note, but I will suggest a fingering change over on page 125. The first measure of the second line. I have a B flat, D flat that I'm holding down from the measure before. All right. You see, this is the one exception to the accidental rule, the rules on accidentals, where the accidental is good for the measure up to the bar line and then cancels out. Well, if it's tied, it carries over for that note. Just for that note, not for the whole measure or the next measure, just for the note. So at the beginning, this is a B flat, D flat here. And then the next note is a B flat, and now it's a D, D flat F. See, they have to put in the flat sign here again, otherwise it would be a D natural. Because the previous D flat is done. We don't want that in no more. All right, so we have a D flat F, and then finally on the eighth note, I recommend to get off the D flat a little early. Got to anyway, because you got to play it on the next chord and use 2-4 on the B-flat, D-flat, because I can connect that. And that's what I want to do. So, the fingering it, for that measure, you're on a 1-3, and then a 1, and then a 3-5, it's just like it's written, but the eighth note is a 2-4. And then a 1-3, and I would just stay with 1-3. You could go to 1-2 on the next one if you want, but it's not necessary because you're going to go with third finger on the last measure. It's okay not to connect those. From here to here. You don't need to connect it. Just here. It's like it's another phrase almost. There's a little bit more on the right hand, but I'll come back to it. I want to talk with the left hand. You're just dealing with chords. It's the rhythm. One and two and three and four and one. One and two and three. It's the same rhythm throughout once you get the notes. Top of page 125 and the last measure of the first line you have here. And then it's an B flat, D flat. Okay. Have a little note about it at the bottom. Have fun reading that. Let's go on. We'll talk about the last line on page 125, the second ending. Dealing with both hands here. You're starting out here. Second measure. 
laser, it's the second finger on the C in the right hand. And then you have that arpeggiated chord. It's the squiggle line. Okay? That means you play it one note at a time very quickly. We call them rolled chords. You roll it. Right, starting at the bottom. Going to the top. Most of the time it's very quickly. But it doesn't have to be. It depends on the piece and the mood of the piece and the, the what you, you know the the effect the emotion. You might roll them very slowly. If you get an arpeggiated chord at the very end, the last one, you might play them like quarter notes so that they could. You know, there's no rule that says it has to be this speed. Right, so you have to take it in context to the piece. In this case, it is fairly quickly. Not real quickly. I mean, this is supposed to be a love piece, I think. So it's, um, that's not lovey, dovey when you go whoop. No, it's, it's, no, it's sweet. Melody is the top note. Bring out the melody. That's what we want to hear. And I'm going to hold that for two and a half counts instead of one and a half because of the fermata. And then I lift everything up and play the eighth note. And then the last chord. And the last fermata for two counts. The left hand, do you see that? The last two measures. practice that move out. The pedal will help connect them, okay, so you can look down and see what you're doing. Now, there is a difference of opinion on style. Uh, not, you'll have to decide for yourself. I'm not going to tell you this is right or that's right or whatever, right? Uh, I was taught in college and I taught my students that when I do an arpeggiated chord, almost always, almost, and in this case it would, the bottom note would be played on the beat. Right. Some people teach arpeggiated chords are always played so the top note is on the beat. Always. That's the way they teach it. Uh, it's up to them. I disagree. But that's their problem. Some people will say the arpeggiated chord should be, the bottom note should be on the beat unless the top note is melody. In which case, the melody should be on the beat. I say, I think you're making up your own rules. I'm not sure where these rules are coming from. But the idea of playing the bottom note on the beat has been around for a long time. You know? And so, that's how I do it. You will decide for yourself how you want to do it. Now, the pedal. Well, let's talk about this pedal. They're getting a little more involved with pedaling now. All right? Things are getting a little more complicated. A lot of people, when they sit down and play a piece, they immediately put their foot on the pedal and they just start going. You know, and I want to take their pedal away from them. I'm tempted to say when they sit down, oh, by the way, the pedal doesn't work. And I know their reaction would be, oh, well, I can't play this without pedal. Yeah, well, then you can't play. Because pedal comes last. You only use pedal if you have to. And I, I want to adjust the pedaling they have in here just a little bit. At the beginning of this, Look at that. They have got the pedal down for the first two measures plus the last measure a little bit. So you have here. Push the note down first and then the pedal. I think that's a little blurry myself. I would change the pedal at the first full measure. between. It's a legato pedaling. So you push the notes down first, leave it down, next note, and then in the next measure I'm going to push the notes down and then lift the pedal and put it right back down. Then I'm going to lift the pedal up as I play the quarter notes in the last measure. The last two measures of the first line, okay, the pedal is down. I'm going to lift it up right when I play the quarter notes in the right hand. Second line, I push the pedal down right after I play the notes. And 
here I disagree with what they're doing. I would lift the pedal up right when I play the quarter notes in the right hand on the second measure. It's just like you did in the first line. And I'd leave those, no pedal on those. So the second line would be this. it the same way on each of these. Now at the top of page 125 it's a little different because now you can hold the pedal down a little longer. I would lift the pedal up right before I play that fourth beat so a little bit of silence in there. Don't have to, you can connect them if you want, but I like to have a little silence in there. So the first line on page 125 would be this way. second line on page 125. I would lift the pedal up when I play the eighth notes in the right hand. Keep in mind you got to keep the left hand down. You don't have to. If you don't want to you could keep it down through that but I, I find that a little more pleasing to the ear than keeping the pedal down through the whole measure. That gets you all the way down to the last ending at the bottom of page 125, the second ending. You're here. Hold it. Lift the pedal up right when you play the eighth note because you're going to lift the left hand and the pedal at the same time. So that eighth note is by itself. Important. And then you can play the last ones, play the notes first, one, two, up. The end, everything comes up at the same time. But that second measure of the bottom line, that eighth note's got to be by itself. So we hear. Okay. And that's how I recommend you do the pedaling. Having said all that stuff, let's try this out and see what happens. Four, four time. But it has a pickup measure. There's only three counts in the first measure. If you look at the last measure, the you know the of each of those first and second endings, the last measure of each one, there's only one count, and that's that's is the way it should be written. There's another method book I'm going through where they don't do it. It's it's inc Ugh. I'm going to give you five counts, a full four counts plus one, and then we come in on beat two. So you're starting out here and here. Foot's on the pedal. Here we go. One, two, three, four, go. One, two. 